Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City Council meeting this Monday, December the 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Ms. Derry, would you call the roll, please? Casey Brown. Here. Bob Billy Johnson. Here. Rob Powell. Here. Daniel Gale. Here. Tim Perry. Here. Lex Perry. Here. There's a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Derry. If you would please rise. We would uh, begin our meeting with uh, prayer. Uh, that's why I'm just Tim Taylor as the Chamber Director and also the Chaplain for the BFW. And then followed by our Pledge of Allegiance by Chief Will Dawson. Now, please bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus, you are our Creator and our Sustainer. You are our Light and our Fortress. You are our Wisdom and our Strength. Lord, you move upon men to establish this great, great nation. You stir men to hope and to dream for a land of freedom. We thank you and we praise you for how you have blessed America and we thank you abundantly for our beloved city here in Greenwood, Arkansas. Lord, in the scriptures you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor, our assembled council, and those who are gathered here this evening. And asking that you would graciously grant wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues, a sense of the welfare and true needs of our people, confidence in what is good and fitting for our community, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement, personal peace and true joy in each of the lives that only comes from you, Lord. I pray for the agenda set before the council today. Please give an assurance of what would please you, Lord, and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Greenwood. And I ask these things in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I would ask that the council, if they haven't already, take a look at the uh, excuse me, the minutes from our November 6th meeting. Ask for approval of those minutes. Thank you, Mr. Approved the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Mr. Brown? Yes. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. 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 Thank you. We have no mayor's knowledge report this evening. At this time, we do. In our agenda, we have uh, recognition and acknowledgement. It would seem as though the folks that are here tonight are just to watch council and work their wonders. I think that's correct. Is that, is that fair to say? That is close. Uh, we have some very, very special guests this evening, and we are excited why they're here. And I know they were excited, and they're still excited. I can still see excitement in their faces, so we're very, very proud of the folks that are here. Everybody that's here tonight that are special guests, and I will step forward to uh, make a uh, recognition. If Coach Golden would step up. The Coach Golden, not the other Coach Golden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. So proud of you ladies for what you've accomplished for sure. So, and we thank you for being here this evening. And congratulations to you. This is a proclamation. You don't have to hold my hand the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Be it known to all to whom these presents come to the city of Greenwood, Arkansas, by and through the Honorable Mayor Doug Kenslow, that's hereby recognized Coach Jennifer Golden and the 2017 Lady Bulldogs volleyball team. Whereas Coach Jennifer Golden began her 17th year as head coach for the Greenwood Lady Bulldogs volleyball team, having taken her, name, her team to the state finals seven times and winning state the first time in 2011. And whereas the Greenwood Lady Bulldogs began the 2017 season with several seniors, seniors, where are you? That's cool and six starters returning from the last years 30 and 17, not a bad year, that went undefeated 12-0 in league play. And whereas the 2017 Greenwood Lady Bulldog volleyball, that's hard to say, the Greenwood Lady Bulldog volleyball team overall record was 32-7-1 and, and, and conference record was 14-0. 14 and 0. Undefeated, 
two years in a row, giving the team the title of 6A West Conference Champion. And whereas for the second time in the past three years, Greenwood played host of the 6A State Volleyball Tournament, giving the Lady Bulldogs home court advantage, which resulted in a trip to the state finals in Hot Springs. And whereas Coach Jennifer Goldman and her 2017 Lady Bulldog Volleyball team returned home to Greenwood as the 6A State Champions. Yeah. <laughs> now, therefore, I, Doug Kinslow, Mayor of the great city of Greenwood, and hereby proclaim December the 5th, 2017, as Coach Jennifer Golden and the 2017 Lady Bulldogs Day. <laughs> Give it up my hand. <laughs> So it's, it's legit, it's all there. Now there's that. Now, this is a little tricky, and I keep saying I'm gonna stop doing it, and, and Chief Dawson suggests that I do, but this is, a, this is a key to the city, okay? It doesn't actually open anything. <laughs> uh, there's been a few try. I give it out to a couple of folks, and they came back down the next morning, and it doesn't open the city off. But it is uh, a symbol of, I, I'm so fortunate and blessed to be mayor of such a great city, and to, to be able to represent 10,000 and plus people uh, we like to believe, and, and I know those folks are very proud of what you've accomplished and what you ladies have accomplished. So this is a symbol of their gratitude and their respect and their honor, and uh, they're, just, they're just awful proud of you. I know I've got a call from every single one. <laughs> We're very proud. Now, along with this, this is the part that he doesn't care for. I've always said, and I'll just continue to say it, that you now, and typically we do it to everybody, so there's a lot of folks here tonight. you got a, you got a full staff working tonight. Everybody gets to speak as fast as you want to through the city of Greenwood until midnight tonight. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Uh, do what? Just you. Yes, exactly. Just, just you. But anyway, there's the key to the city. We're so proud and honored that you're here tonight to, to uh, honor us with your presence. And we're just really, really proud of you. Sorry it took so long, but uh, this art pride just goes forever and ever. So, Hi, congratulations. We, we went all the girls all up. The, all Absolutely. the girls, yeah. All Absolutely. the girls up. And you did okay too, Coach.
Yeah. 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 Ye
appreciate it. Thanks for what you do up Ken. Uh, number two is SRCA. Lisa Moore, I don't think is here, but I, do, I know we have a written report in your packet from her. So if you have any questions, certainly direct those to uh, my office and we'll get those back to, to Lisa. Uh, number three is the Parks Commission. I know Ms. Bell's here. If anybody has any questions, there's a report, I believe, from Richard in there also. If anybody have anything? I got a question. Okay. I was reading the report. I got to know about the circus. I want to know about the gender I got no other service that the oh. <laughs> <laughs> detail anymore. <laughs> I mean I know it's a bigger space service. We had a group out of Sarasota of Florida that came up and had told earlier in the year we wanted to use our facility for a uh, circus where we were concerned about elephants and grass and things and people hanging from the beams. They assured us they were going to do that. It was basically a uh, I think dogs, the small domestic animal circus, they did, we had photos, uh, they set up, came inside, set up a beautiful uh, big round circus, uh, I forget what it's called, like a big top, like a big, rain, like, yeah. like a big top on the floor, had chairs all around and stuff, didn't have great turnout, it was a week night, so a lot of people turned out, cleaned up the facility perfect, could no sign that would be in there at all, so very good. What is it? What is it? Well, the 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 that was the other thing I didn't understand. Nowadays, I guess they have gender reveal parties. Uh, or the board of girls. Oh! I was going in a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that. That's why. That's Surgery size. That's all that was. I got you. I got you. It's a boy. It's a boy. I think it was a girl, actually. Good. Parks Director, yeah, this will be my last time to come for you guys to Parks Director uh, starting January 1st. Nathan <coughs> Neighbors will be uh, brought, he'll be coming up. He's been in Hot Springs for about 10 years, has worked his way up through the uh, Parks Department down there in Hot Springs. Um, seems to be an early 40 ish guy, young, uh, he's ready to move his family has been here. Uh, there were about 15 candidates all together that uh, came in and applied for the job. And there to down to five and then down to three and then make them He's here ready to go. I'll say also I'll like to good spots around the caboose. That looks good. We're gonna try to do a three dimensional next year and just put it on and all of that. It's just kind of last minute get that started. Before you sit down, Richard, I didn't plan on doing anything because I know you don't like any of your hoopla, so I'm gonna hoopla a little bit. Uh, on a very serious note, you're almost as good as the last guy. <laughs> almost. Almost. Uh, but seriously, uh, as Richard has said, this is his last uh, meeting as far as council goes as, as a parks director. And I just want to thank you personally. You, you have taken uh, the, the parks department to another level. I mean, the Parks Commission, I think, would wholeheartedly agree with that. You've done a wonderful job. Uh, with everything that you touched, it all turns to gold, and I mean that seriously. Uh, from the memorial at the square to to the trail of lights to everything that you've done, you just done great. And Nathan's going to take point on that path. Well, we we hope he's not, but uh, he was, but please acknowledge Richard McKinney as our walker.
opportunity uh, to do so. And I'll call on you. You can come up to the microphone, and you know, I would ask that you state your name and your address just for the record. And uh, you have five minutes to speak on, on whatever subject you'd like to speak on. The person on our list this evening is Mr. Josh Niles. having me to take a short and squeeze and put it in the paper. Um, Letter 313, where we're at, my name is Josh Miles. On December 5th, 1933, the 21st Amendment was ratified as an announcement for proclamation from President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment of January 16th, 1919, ending the increasingly unpopular nationwide prohibition of alcohol. I would ask you this day, December 5th, 2017, that you would put my right to apply for a private club license back on the agenda. I would ask that you do it tonight, as time is of the essence. Every day that goes by is a moment closer in time that the city of Greenwood has to continue everyday costs. If we don't do something to help strengthen the infrastructure of our town, then we'll be faced with taxation of our citizens like the AMP tax already does. Just last year alone, the AMP tax cost the people of Greenwood roughly $130,000. This number seems to increase every year. As of 2014, it was a little over $100,000, increasing roughly $10,000 every year. So by 2024, we will be taking $200,000 from our citizens. The facts are, we will continue to grow at the rate we are, with or without the sale of alcohol. The well will begin to dry up, and we'll leave the city of Greenwood in a bankrupt state if we don't make decisions now to fix this. Why should I, or you, or the people of Greenwood be subject to taxes like this when there is an alternative? From sidewalks to fire trucks, this makes sense. From cracked asphalt on our walking trail to our underfunded voice club, this makes sense. How will the city try to tax the people next? Will they request a property tax increase? I'm not sure about your property taxes, but mine are high enough. At this rate, we'll never see big companies come to this area because of property taxes alone. Allowing alcohol sales within our city in a controlled environment is a thing to do. At my restaurant, we will have a two drink max and I suggest that the city of Greenwood make an ordinance, if possible, for every restaurant to do so. I also would request that my business and every business would have quarterly audit, making sure that they are doing the right thing. I also would request that the A&P tax be audited every quarter as well. I have spoken with most of the restaurants in town. They want this as much as I do. You think they would be here right here with me, but unfortunately some people think if you even utter the word alcohol in this town, that it would cost the business. I'm here fighting for my 21st Amendment right to sell alcohol, and I would ask that you agree with our founding fathers and allow me to do so. When you believe you join me today and say yes to today and say goodbye to yesterday, for the thinking of yesterday will get us left in tomorrow, like towns like Hartford, Arkansas. Hartford once was a thriving community, but no longer is. It is nothing more than a ghost town. As I understand that some of you are up for re-election, or election in another area of politics, know this, you are put in office by the people and for the people, so I would ask that you vote for the people, and don't go on how someone suggests you to vote, or how someone voted before you voted. Together we are strong, and divided we are nothing. Come together tonight and vote this in, so we as a people can save our money and not be subject to another taxation. When you invest in me, I will invest in you. Thank Any you. questions? Thank you. How much for the council? Thank you, Mr. Knopf. Thank you. Appreciate you. Next is Mr. Newcomb.
uh, Bob Powell and myself put the ordinance together and started the AP Commission. The AP Commission does an outrageous job in the city. I've been involved in the AP Commission as a councilman. I was there when the first initiated. I've been a benefit of the AP money for the events I hold for kids in this town. And the revenues that come in are <coughs> 10 times higher than what the AP Commission has been. The AP Commission is top class. Without the AP Commission, we would be missing a lot in the city. And I would gladly pay my extra 10 cents a dollar, whatever it takes, to see this city improve. If I can't do that, I need to move. Now, what I wanted to talk about. Uh, of all people, my daughter gave me a hard time last month. <coughs> I told my parents it's been a long time since I bought a drink. It was about 50 years. Something like that. I said about a thousand drinks a month would be sold here in Arkansas for Greenland. I still hold firm that big. Uh, I said three dollars a drink. She told me six dollars a drink. Okay. If you sold a thousand drinks a month at six dollars a drink, you're talking about six thousand dollars revenue. Seventy-two thousand dollars revenue a year. Ten percent tax, seventy-two hundred dollars a year in tax. Five percent tax, thirty-six hundred dollars. I still say if we need money that bad, we're in trouble. We don't need it. We've got good accounts, we've got a good marriage, we've got a good job. Uh, something else. They got said that I didn't like. Uh, alcohol sales in Greenwood being compared to the entire county of Crawford, uh, the city of Fort Smith. The city of Fort Smith is 800% larger than Greenwood. Crawford County is 610% larger than Greenwood. You're mixing apples and oranges from the standpoint of the county. That's wrong. You don't do that. In the clubs, restaurant, bar, sports bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, they serve what's called a craft beer glass. <coughs> you have to fill it up. Well, most beers in, in grocery store, liquor store, whatever, is 12 ounces ten. That craft beer will hold 2.7 12 ounce beers in that glass. According to research, and I didn't just get my phone in, Look up figures, you know me, I've been spending a month to do it. The football games people watch last about four hours. According to the research, people will drink four glasses of a craft beer in the four hours. That comes up to about ten and a half beers. Ten and a half beers. Um, that's a lot. I'd like to read to you. This also came off the internet. Uh, just something about alcohol absorption. Alcohol absorption into the blood seat. Bloodstream takes place throughout the gastronomy. Press said that we're from the I don't know that I can. <laughs> yes, How about the gut? Yeah, I like it. And throughout the gut. When alcohol reaches the bloodstream, it is very quickly distributed throughout the body. Body tissues absorb alcohol at different rates. For example, muscle tissues absorb alcohol more rapidly than fat tissue. Now that's a study with West Virginia University School of Public Health. The alcohol you drink travels to your stomach, unlike food, alcohol doesn't need to be digested, and can pass quickly and easily into the bloodstream. About 20% of alcohol that enters the stomach is absorbed immediately. We were told last week that it'd be a while on Sunday left. But according to the Center for Disease Control, 20% of the community. After entering the bloodstream, alcohol travels very quickly to every part of the body. Your brain will do part of your body to be affected. The alcohol will dull parts of your brain. They control how your body works, affecting your actions, and your ability to make decisions to stay in control. At first, you may feel happy and less inhibited. But after a few more drinks, you'll probably start to slurry words, get blurred in, lose your coordination, <coughs> alcohol effect, affects your mood, and can also make you feel down or aggressive. Mr. Newcomb, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, to be fair to everyone, your 
five minutes. So I'm sorry. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Next on the list is Mr. Russ Kaysen. Good evening. Good evening. Have you guys, a lot of us, you guys know almost everybody up here. Uh, I'm a 23 year uh, career business owner. Lived in this town for 25 years. Uh, see a lot of people come and go through this town a lot. Like to see this town grow and thrive. Like you wouldn't believe. It. You wouldn't believe. It. Like to see sidewalks and everything going our way. Parks mowed and cleaned up. I'd like to see that really do. What bothers me really a lot is uh, driving through this town, going to Fort Smith to get a get a good meal, and maybe a drink. And I'm not saying drinks or cocktails for everybody. There's no doubt about it. It's not. I just feel that if Greenwood were to have a sensible alcohol consumption bill. It would be great for me. I really do. There's nothing better than a nice cold margarita in Mexican food. Or, and you know, my gosh, we have the pizza places. What's better than a piece of pizza and beer? I just hate to drive through this town knowing the money that's leaving this town, not only in the alcohol sales, but in the retail, the restaurant business. Well, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was all the folks I had signed up this evening. Is there anybody here that would like to speak? Uh, again, you know, if you missed the sign up, that's okay. We would acknowledge you and give you five minutes. Nope. Okay. Thank you again for those who spoke this evening. If that's the case. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And it's agenda additions. And we have done pretty well in the past by not having those, but unfortunately that's not the case tonight. Uh, we have uh, actually six or seven. So with, with council's blessing, I'd like to read these to you and, and let's we jot these down. Uh, number four would be from the police department. And I've shortened version, you may want to basically capital expenditure and a grant. Is that fair enough to budget amendment? Number four. Number five would also be the police department uh, to waive Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, right? You said we need yes. to waive it and then do the resolution. That's correct. So how do you do that? Do what? Okay. Number six would probably be. Actually, six would be five. Okay, let's let's do this. Number five would be a resolution to move funds within the police <coughs> budget. Yes. No, yeah, that is it first. And then you have one that's going to be to offset the cost of if you approve the competitive bid. Right. So, so the, read them. Oh, first. okay. So competitive bidding is first. <laughs> Waiting for competitive bid. Okay. Right. Okay. Number four. Number five. Sorry. <clears throat> Number four is capital expenditure. Yeah. That's, just, that's a standard one. Yeah. That's not real. Grant, you can put a grant on it if you want to. I think it's related to a grant. And then number six, number five would be the waiving of competitive bidding. Police, number six, police would be a resolution to move on with them there. But, okay, number seven is planning department. They rezoning for 412 Cedar Street. <coughs> number eight is also planning department. A same top number 411 Dogwood rezone. Number nine is the fire department, moving funds. I'm sorry. <laughs> Number seven is planning department. Yeah. Yeah. No. But what's the? Four twelve Cedar. Sorry. Number eight, four eleven Dogwood. Rezone. <laughs> Number nine is the fire department moving funds within their uh, budget for a partial remodel. Of the <coughs> and number 10 would be the adoption of the 2018 calendar. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's to amend personal policies. Same one. Is that it? Same. Same one. Same one. Okay. 
to give away something that could be a revenue producer in the future, I think is foolish. I have no idea. 20 years ago, I would have had no idea what could happen now that cell phones would be as big as they are and <coughs> landlines. No, there's people don't have landlines anymore. That was a big revenue producer in franchise fees. I have no idea what someone might come to the city and say, hey, I want to run a fiber optic line through this deal and it's going to be massive and I want to use your easements. And we say, sure, because we want the money. We, we have the easements. We have the easement on the front. I mean, it, it would be, I just said, the, I, don't people, people, I just do not understand the rationale, Sonny. I'm going to vote no. These people out of a 120 foot deep lot, they've got 50 foot they can't use. And so do I. And what's the point? I mean, I have, I have, I have setbacks and easements on my property, and so does everybody else in town. And there's people lived here for 80, 90 years, and they've got, and they've got platted easements that that's not being used now. But at some point, that could be a revenue producer that we may need. And I see no rationale to to convey it back to them. If we're going to convey it back to the people in Oaks, let's convey it back to everyone in the city. Well, oh, yeah. But Powell, that's, that's not true because we're not we're using the utility easements in other parts of the city. This is a, an unused uh, part of a parcel here that is that is hindering people from building what they would like to build in their property. Like I said, it's like taking 50 foot from a piece of property instead of 25 foot. We we have closed alleys. I've got a book, and Charlotte's got a book that thick of alleys and uh, roads that we have changed in the city because things do change. Sure, we just closed an alley up by, in, by the Sebastian County EMS. It went right through it and went up to the old train station. Exactly. It makes sense. That makes sense. There's no way we could ever produce revenue. They might as well utilize it. Uh, it runs right through the center of the property. It's a road easement. There was no utility easements there. But you're talking easement. about using this this back part possibility of using this back part for revenue when we already have it in the front. And and mine too. My lot's the same way. You've got you've got utility easement front and rear. I've got utility easement front and rear. Gas in the front, cable TV in the back, and unused easement on the okay, side. Okay, and this is gas, cable, and everything else in the front, and nothing in the back. Nothing right now. But in the future, that's a revenue producer for us. Possibly. I see no reason to convey it back. Well, we've got, if you look at your map, you'll see the, the lots there that uh, we could have people uh, building on those lots and putting swimming pools in and, and and accessory buildings and things like that, that that you're basically telling them that uh, uh, somewhere in the future we might want to use your 25 foot in the back. Right. Okay. And that's the way they bought the lot. All right. They knew that going in when they signed the papers. No, they, the they, thought the, they thought the easement was in the back, but, but it wasn't. It was in the front. And so now we, we recognize that it's in the front. They would like to have that back portion. When you go through closing with the title company, all that's in there. You signed the dotted line with the power company and all that was in there. But uh, all I know is uh, the request was made, it went through the planning commission, the planning commission approved it, and I brought it to you. Yeah. Now, uh, I guess what I'm seeing here is, is that it looks to me like the, uh, the back easement is 20 foot and the front is, I see, you know, a 15 foot and then a 25. So is it. Is it the actual utility easement is, is 15 feet? And then the... Uh, there's a 15 foot easement uh, in the front, there's a 20 foot in the back, there's a 25 foot green space, and then another 25 foot easement. That's brown. Okay. And uh, uh, how deep are the lots on the, on the Dawson Valley side? Uh, uh, they're a good size lot. Let me see if I've got... They're more of an estate lot. That's the reason why they asked for the green space, so that there would be a buffer uh, between the two. Uh, they are 220 feet uh, deep. 220 feet deep. And so, I mean, there's, and so out of that 225 feet, there is a 25 foot uh, easement there. And then there's that 10 foot green space. So it's like a basically really a uh, there is the, uh, <coughs> behind there. This is the 
Carlson, I just thought this is paper going to move this to vote off of Houston that goes down and turns, but that's the, the property that's backed up against the other. Okay. Uh, with the green space, is it possible to, uh, everything about push and shove that you could uh, use a green space uh, for a, an easement? It's, it's, been, it's part of the uh, city's part of our green space. I mean, it's, it's a dedicated, dedicated green space to the city. So if we yeah. need to, we can use that as Green a, space not, is not to be used as easement. The definition of green space is just dedicated the way God left it and be left the devices of nature and just the way God left it. That's green space. Not trenching it up and putting the lines in it. Why 
each individual alderman voted to turn them down that may vary uh, in, in my case is definitely because we didn't have any kind of plan in place we didn't have any kind of permitting process in place we had no taxation in place uh, I feel like there are people that First Baptist Church have been here for 150 years and they don't want to see this right across the street when they open their doors I don't blame them I respect that so I've a uh, copied for the most part off of Conway, Arkansas, their permitting process for uh, mixed drink and beer and wine sales within a, in a restaurant, private club permit. So they have to, so the person who applies for the permit has to come before us first to receive it. So all, all I'm doing is putting a plan in place so they know the most likelihood that they would get approved. And what their supplemental privilege license privilege permit would cost, and they know up front what the taxation is going to be. So uh, I just wanted to explain that to y'all. Uh, we've been through the first reading, and it passed unanimously. Uh, now we're on the second reading. It takes a third reading. It takes three readings to become law. So uh, we're on the second reading right now. Uh, and council, I, I wasn't going to go through it line by line like I did the first reading, but I was going to go through and hit uh, mistakes that I saw and some other things that I may like to add, if that's okay with y'all. Can I ask you a question, Rod? Yes. Sir. Uh, just for clarity, for everybody, the, the the title of this is an ordinance uh, establishing a permitting process uh, for selling and dispensing controlled beverage within the city of Greenwood by businesses licensed by the state to sell alcoholic beverages. Does that include? I mean, you said something there a while ago, whatever you said. Um, uh, we, we've generally been talking about a restaurant, liquor by the drink, that type of thing. Does this include a liquor store? Any establishment selling alcohol? Does that need to be clarified, what we're talking about? Well, we go into... We can get into that Arkansas Code 3 9 214. No, that's it. I'm sorry. Which is my second comment about that would be any anything on the books with the state, whatever the requirements are for the, by the state, and I'm speaking uh, of you know, what we've talked about generally uh, is a liquor store that there are specific guidelines and reg regulations of a liquor store and where they can be located, located and what they can do. Um, where state statute would be more limited than what we have put in place, I think we need to say, you know, the, the state statutes would, would supersede this document. You understand what I'm saying? But, the state code prevails. That will be what the law is anyway. Yeah. So I don't know if that needs to be. Well, I think it needs to be in there because that's just. You know, yeah, that's what it is, there. right? But I don't want to get confused with, you know, the, the Bash Grass is not a restaurant. Mr. Niles is a restaurant. There's a liquor store. Those are three different types of businesses. Just Josh so Niles clear. has the right to come and apply for the permit. Right. But, you know, Eastside uh, gas station does not, I mean, we, there's nothing we can do that they can sell beer. There, there's nothing we can do where if you want to drive around your golf cart drinking beer, that's still illegal. But someone that's got a restaurant in place would, would have the right, and, and whether we pass this or not, they still have the right to come before us. Uh, we're just putting a plan in place. Um, you know, just in, in your section six, qualification of applicants, persons to whom a state alcohol permit has been issued are presumed qualified to hold a city alcoholic beverage permit. Now, I don't have any problem which way we're going here. I just want to be clear. And you know, there's. Man, if, 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 if the state. Yeah, if the state ABC issued the Basher Grass a permit, well then they qualify. They qualify, uh, right? 
they could go up and make an argument that they're selling 53% food yeah. and they have a restaurant in place and uh, they would be qualified. And I don't, and I don't have any problem with that if that's the way but it works. But, but like Mike said, it refers to state law. What we're doing is in addition to state law, mm -hmm. we're just doing our supplemental privilege license, the taxation, and whatever else that. But we feel certain that this document does not pertain to a liquor store. It does not pertain to Or what about Dollar General selling beer? Doesn't mm -hmm. pertain. No. Not unless Dollar General opened up the restaurant inside of there. Yeah. Or let, unless they launch it. If the state law changes, then we may have yeah. to look at this ordinance again right. and how we're addressing it. But if we have the state law stands, that's not a yeah. But even when I was looking at it, there are, even if the county were to change, say the county took a vote and become wet, and every community inside Sebastian County become wet, we still need this ordinance in place. And the reason you need this ordinance in place is because <coughs> If you take a community like Moralton, which is in Conway County, it's a wet county in a wet city, they still have people that apply for private clubs. And the reason they do is because they cannot sell alcohol on Sunday if they have at a liquor store or, uh, you know, gas, I guess gas station, all that. But if they apply for a private club, they get around all that to where they can sell beer and wine on Sunday. So we still need to put planning in place, even if there is an initiative right now to turn the entire county wet. Uh, we still need to put it in place. Uh, so I'm going to move on, Daniel. Uh, I, yeah. I guess the well, just <coughs> touching on that in that blue what on page five where it says private club permits, that kind of establishes that we're really dealing with private clubs only in the ordinance. On page five, it's really section, section 18 of the top of the page, but section 17, or 18, 18, excuse me, section 18. But that really specifies that we're going to have a five plus off. Each one of these 
applicants has to come before us. Right after the applicant's state from the property. Power to that. Thank you. No, it's fine. I'm going to move forward. Okay. Rod, you're basically requiring a deposit. Requiring a deposit. Should we clear that up even more? Yeah. Because I mean, if you're going to return it, you know what I'm saying? Return it. Yeah, you need to return it. You can't just stay in there and it's refundable. Yeah. Yes, you don't do it. All right, how do you want to stay? Is the city, shall we come? Uh, well, I think you, you just add a new. You could just add a new. The end of that is to get a new sentence. Refundable. Yeah, it's, it's not a new sentence. It's under, under, under the section nine. 4, make a J, or a, I'm sorry, a, a K. It says if the permit is denied, applicant will be refunded $1,500 in full. Okay. I like that. You want to say end of K? Yeah, end of K. Yeah. Okay. So do put accompanied by a fifteen hundred dollar fee and a copy of that one state permit prior to approaching the city council and also add a K that says the fifteen hundred dollars be refunded if the permit is enough. Okay, let's you all okay to move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if you back up from K go to I. Yeah. Section four, number I. That's where I had a. Uh, uh, 2,000 feet of school, church, daycare, youth activity organizations, alcoholic anonymous, narcotics anonymous, meeting place, alcoholic, narcotic dependency center without prior approval from city council. Would like to add mental health facility. And that was a request from one of my constituents, Ms. Kimberly Brown. And I think it makes sense. Any comments? Right, I'd like to suggest that the mental health or assisted living facility. I'm just fine with that. I'm going to add that in my notes. It's where on the high. Place on the high. Again, each applicant has to approach the council. We are just telling them their best chances of being approved. And it does say without prior approval of city council. So. On that section, Rod, I would also like to clarify the 2,000 feet. That's going to be a sticky deal. I agree with you. Thank you. I forgot to write that down. I think, uh, you know, uh, we can either add at the end of that paragraph, uh, measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the property lines, or? I would put it after the 2,000 feet, just to put it there, that yeah. way you know. It's you, know you, could, you could go, no permit will be issued for an establishment whose nearest property line is less than 2,000 feet. You could put it that way. But what I want, what I want to be clear about is how you measure it. As the crow flies from property line to property line, it's not out the door and around the corner and around the <laughs> parking lot, you know. I agree. I think we have to find that restaurant. Should we say property line or say uh, building? That's what I was asking. Building to building to building. 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 Building to Walmart is an example, is a very large property. The school property is a large piece of property. It's a long way from the edge of the property to the door. Now what door are we talking about at the school? You know, if you get in the nearest property line to the nearest property line, it's going to be hard to argue about. We go back door to side door. <laughs> oh, you not you know front door to front. Close the door, close the door. Turn it around. You know. I was 
site, they still started from building to building as the cause, <coughs> you know, and that still is, you know, the nearest corner to the nearest corner or whatever it is, you know, the building. It's irrelevant at 2,000 feet if I can have the plus foot one anyway. I might yeah. add, if you, uh, the Highway 1071 area that the uh, uh, economic development has been looking at, you know, doing good things with, 2,000 foot from property line to property line would eliminate that area. In some cases, in most cases, they do it from door to door because somebody could have a, a building on a large parcel of land, and again, there's another large parcel of land that could only be separated by a road if you've got these buildings far off. So they would look at, and I can give you an example on Rodney Perham and uh, uh, Little Rock and Chapel Road, there was a church there. It's really small, so it's across the street, but the church on the big piece of property, Shorty small at that corner. Uh, the thousand foot that they used in Little Rock uh, from property line to property line would not allow uh, Shorty Small to build there, but they they went from door to door, which allowed them to build it. So that might be something that you would consider. Like I said, 2,000 feet or 71 corridor would pretty much be blocked off. Uh, you know, the area across from Walmart, again, at 71, uh, a 10 spur area, all that, those four corners would be blocked off because of the 2,000 feet. That's you know, it's over 40 miles. So just a thought. Mr. Brown, just a little bit. Even if that, that one line right there, could, if that's all this could be that one line. Would you mind know. jumping to the microphone, sir? Just you wouldn't have to worry about any of it. Thank you. Because if that footage, it ain't going to happen. Anyway. Well, unless we got power through the council. council. So we still have the options of council to make variances depending on the presentation. So it's too bad. You're just laying out the most likely scenario to be approved. Gentlemen, entertain a comment. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Would you just state your name? Jeffrey Toll was my name. 840 Country Club, Greenwood. Um, I spoke with you last meeting. Uh, I'm talking to you on behalf of the golf course, not for my personal self. But along the lines of what you're saying, you may, you may or may not want to enact a special set of circumstances. Because if you go just from our clubhouse, 2,000 feet, that's, that's not even going to get you off the golf course. So you may want to go from property line. When it comes to the golf course, you, you may wish to go from property line. Number to one is 2,000 feet, right? Exactly. Key box degree. Exactly. So that's, that's it, it's not apples to apples in one thing. So, you know, because we're talking about the, the golf yeah. course. In which alcohol is going to be anywhere on the property. Think about not just that club. Think house, about the clubhouse. It only be sold the clubhouse, though. Only be sold at the clubhouse. That's what it is. Now, also, I would say if you, you guys have been out at the golf course, you realize that we are going to be 2,000 feet from many, even from our property line. We're going to be 2,000 feet from these establishments uh, that Mr. Powell is talking about. So we're going to be able to meet that with no problem. But because of the way you're wanting to write it up, you may you may or may not want to word that differently when it applies to the golf course as far as going from door to door. I don't think I don't, I don't see how that would work with us if you want to use the door on our pro shop, it's not going to work. If, if we did building to building, that affects y'all in no way. Because y'all are so far out there. Okay. I mean it's the difference that when you talk building versus line, the clubhouse to East Hills, I guess, closest school. Building well over, building. It's well over 2,000. Versus number three, T box to wherever their property line is. Or wherever, right, so so that is. Right. I mean, that's a lot of difference. It's, it, it is. Either it's way, I don't think it affects you. Okay. Well, again, oh, just, nice. just throwing that out there because, again, I think in more than one way, uh, bash drafts ought to be viewed differently as well because of the things that I said last time I was at this podium. That again, we're not talking about retailing uh, alcohol to the public. That's not what we're doing. This would be strictly for members 
of the golf course for consumption right there on the golf course. And it, and it really enables me a way to control what's already uh, happening out there. Without a restaurant, it would be no good. Because when you go, if, even if you were to come to us, we'd say, sure, go on to ABC. We got our approval. They're going to say, where's your restaurant? How much food are you selling? Explain it all. And they're not going to give you a private club license. Well, I, I beg to differ with you there because when I spoke with ABC, what they asked me was, is if our sole purpose for our business was that of the consumption of alcohol. And I said, no, it's not. We're a golf course. And they understood that. So our sole purpose is the enjoyment of playing golf. Well, let's get to the third reading, and then you're welcome to apply. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Daniel, it seems to make more sense to me that we just reflect state, what state law has said in a couple other places. Building to building, straight line. Do you want to say well, that's that's footage, you definitely see the buildings, you know, it's sometimes hard to turn. Well, it's state law's footage. footage. But at least you're reflecting that building to building and the stretch line. Yeah. So we'll add that to 2000. After 2000, say building to building, Tom. Okay, okay. Uh, if you'll move on to. I have a question. I wouldn't ask a question on this, but I didn't want Chief, to. Chief, if you'd come up to um, <coughs> the city address and <laughs> where we can go in. My question was, um, because this just this came up here, uh, right beside Pacino, we've got a brand, uh, we have a church in that facility that just went in. And, uh, and say, over on the east, of, in, anywhere in town, someone decided to come in and put in a fly. Uh, for a license. Well, the next day there can be a church sitting right beside it. And it's not like they apply a license, they can put it in and like that. But what are you going to do? What, what does this do to make it where a person's got equal footing on uh, an able by piece of property? We're protecting our I established. Understand, I understand that. Say out, say out there on 71, and someone wants to put something out there. One of those different facilities, the easiest one to put in would be a religious facility, so they can put that in and then say, hey, no, we can't do that, it's been 900 feet because we own this property right here. And this, I, I'm just asking that, that don't mind me up. You're saying when we turn them down from building a church next well, to... Well, we no, do, what we can do is say, no permit will be issued from establishment plus 2,000 feet door to door of uh, an already established daycare, church, etc. Okay. <clears throat> and that way, it kind of convinces what you're saying. Somebody comes and applies, and then somebody goes out the next day and says, "Hey, we're having a church here now." Right. Well, you start doing some um, thousand foot here. circles. I mean, you're you're limited to very small areas already, and then if that could happen. That brings up an interesting question: of what happens if this exists and somebody builds a church? Well, we can say it's not existing. We're, so we're backing up to high, and we're putting, you know, building to building, yeah. the building to building of an established school. If the church. fermented alcohol sales were first, and you decided to build a church next to it, which renders him in violation. No, because it says he's already got his purpose. We're adding the language of an established. It was all of this. Well, it's not there, it's not established. You can just say established at the time of the permit application. I'm making everybody come to the line. State law. Yeah. State law says that it's not an existing church that, in fact, you. you it's not an existing church. It's an existing church that, in fact, you, you, you've got to follow the rules of the state where it's 1,500 feet. But if it's not an existing church, you can't, you can't, you can't come by later and put it. Their church within 800 feet or 900 feet and say your, your license is no longer. Doesn't affect the, the, no. the liquor no. sales. No. That's the grand state law. State, state law, not, not what you might do here or what you try to do here, yeah. but, but you have to first go back to follow the state law. So on behind the 2000, we want to put building to building of an established at the time of application. Mm -hmm. Charlotte? 
but in private clubs, it's zero. Now, that's what the attorney from ABC told me, Michael here. He said it's, it's zero. And he said, and we've left it that way because the way they've written state law to where they now have to come before the council, he said, we figured by the time they arrive at ABC, this has got the thumbs up from that little community, Greenwood, Arkansas, wherever. And he said, so it's met all your zoning requirements, all the, everything that you wanted. So that's what we're doing is putting this in place because we've never had anything in place. Well, I, like I said, all I ask is I've heard several different numbers and except that we're just this group here has to do that those people. But you don't actually wish it was 3,000 or 500 people? I think the, the uh, Church of Christ is across the street where our business is. I don't think anything should be on that side of the street close to that church. On this side of the street, there's the Jules Bakery, our sign shop, there's this jam mart, there's Mr. Niles' business, there's the, the haircut place. Who cares who's bus there? The people have to cross the street there. There are only people that care. Northside Church of Christ cares. That's, that's fine. That's fine. I just like to have a, a consistent number and I don't want to put 2,000. I think mean, that's, that's your number. That's great. It's been 2,000 ever since I presented the ordinance. Okay, I haven't been here before. And I'm, I just want to ask the question. But we have had discussions about it. I, I mean, we appreciate, I appreciate the question. I mean, that's what this is about. Is it, in fairness to us as a council, until they changed the state law, this wasn't a process for us. Nobody was coming to us for ask for, ask for an ordinance to go apply for anything. Uh, we're just trying to, in my mind, what we're trying to go through here is go through the process of planning to prepare for as folks come forward to us because this isn't the first time, it's only the last time people come to us with these kind of questions because we're changing the state law now the onus is on us to try to decide and we're, and we're just kind of going through I think that process of trying to be prepared and, and this all this conversation is good for generating thought. I just, I just thought want people to think. I just said earlier a while ago I came from down this highway to 10 to Greenwood. And I looked at where the church was. I, I tried to determine where 2,000 feet was. There's not a place that I can see in Greenwood that you have a restaurant with private alcohol. There's quite because a, of that number. There's quite a few places. And there's uh, out on the highway, there would be quite a few places. In the center of town, not so many places without the council approving. There right. again, it says in here, it's just the last line, you know, without prior approval from council. So you're telling me that the, necessarily it doesn't have to be 2,000 feet? There's room in this ordinance for, for a variance, sir. If I wanted to want something up in my room, if I wanted to open a restaurant, I don't have to worry about being 2,000 feet away from the You'd church. You'd have to come and ask. You're going to have to come and ask. Okay, that's what I want to know. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And the 2,000 feet, yet, yeah, just so, and I think you already know, is not, th this is far from being finished. Okay. So the 2,000 feet that Mr. Powell initiated this with is just a number, and I'm not saying just a number, but he, he's done his own work, and that's the number he wants. Okay. The council will decide if that's the number to stay. Okay. Again, and input from citizens is what, what this is all about. I just have to bring this respect to you all. I don't know you. You, you, you did the job I couldn't do. I just wanted to ask you a question. Like I said, the 2,000 feet have been arbitrary. Uh, it's giving you the most likely scenario that you and your business will get approved. You, you, when you look at this and you pay your $1,500 permit fee, that you'll come before the council and you say, I'm, I'm less than 2,000 feet. But we have in here where we can approve you. You know what? Well, the, the, the golf course was a great example. If it, if it came in under, and this ordinance is in place, he's well beyond the 2,000 feet mark. It's not even a discussion point. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, we didn't get your name right in anyway. Yeah. Chuck Burgess. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We just didn't get it written down. I think Mr. Niles just wanted to speak. I'll keep it okay. okay. I mean, it's always up to the council. It's their meeting. Okay. So. Okay. I'll keep it real short. And we want to go. My, my only question is, and I know we're not the state and we're a town, but how are we letting ch uh, a church dictate where we put a business that, that, that gives money back to our city. Um, I mean, to me, it's a separation of church and state. I get it, we're not the state or the town, but, but how are we letting the church dictate? I, I believe most of y'all up here probably go to church, and most of y'all be all up here probably drink a drink. 
And how, are, how are we letting the church dictate this? I, I don't understand that. <clears throat> it's not really uh, me. The church is the, the citizen that come up. I mean, you spoke in favor, but there was uh, quite a few citizens, you know, last month that, that spoke, you know, uh, that would, you know, oppose it and stuff. And so it wasn't really a church per se. It was the number of citizens that, uh, you know. But that's a framework of the state statute. I mean, that's, if, if that's we, its basic framework. If we frame our stuff off of their stuff, then I don't think we should, just be a personal opinion, I don't think we should dictate uh, where a restaurant is. Um, I know a handful of y'all, and probably a handful of y'all have been in my business. It doesn't represent a bar. It, it doesn't. I mean, it's a very nice establishment. I, I put a ton of money into it. I, I promise you, I have the nicest restaurant in Greenwood. Um, and I want to continue to put more stuff in the Greenwood, but I, I personally don't think, and I understand 2,000 feet, I understand how you got the number, why you got the number, why you want to put it in place. Um, I'm an analytical thinker also, um, so I get it. Um, but that being said, um, I think 2,000 feet is excessive, and I think all of y'all are intelligent enough, uh, and you should use your intellect uh, to understand that 2,000 feet is, is excessive. Thank you for your time. This man from the two. Kimberly Brown, Highway 96, Greenwood. I would urge you that we're doing our due diligence and being on the forefront of making an ordinance that I would pick whatever guidelines that you, the citizens really want and stick with it. I just see a huge problem when you say we can possibly do 1950 for somebody and maybe 1875 for somebody else. I just feel like whatever number and rules that you pick, it, it, if you change it for one, then somebody's going to come in and go, well, mine was just one foot less and you're saying no to me. So I think whatever number that you guys decide is what's in the best interest of our community, make that the guideline. You guys are going to go insane every other month trying to go, who are we going to say yes to and who are we going to say no to over a few different feet. I think no matter what we do, you're, we're going to have that problem because every single one of them is going to come before us. We're just giving them the best, most, the best likelihood of passing. That's all I have. If you'll, if you'll just stay there, I've got a question for you. Yes. If we can move on, because you give, you called me and you talked about advertising. So talked about ahead, signage. I was I'll go ahead and bring that, that up if you don't mind. No, I'll, I'll explain the way I understood it from you. If you don't mind, uh, well, I was going to add this to another section. Uh, and in my conversation with Ms. Brown, uh, I decided to add a section, if, if y'all, let us see what you say, if advertising alcohol will be limited to the interior of the building only. What Ms. Brown brought up is driving through town and a big sign out on the highway saying, Greenwood's only alcohol right here, and a big arrow flashing. Now we do have a sign ordinance that's in place, but it won't eliminate really the wording and what she said. I agreed with her. I don't know how much y'all agree. Uh, did I, did I get it? Can't well, my, my hope was not having signs outside or even in their windows. I know a lot of people, <coughs> like, even like Coke or Pepsi products, if you push their products, they'll give you posters to put in windows. And I just didn't, and not that that's what you intend, because no, your I windows are beautiful. No, I, I, but I didn't want to go by and see like a big Coors Light, you know, so in, in the window as you walk into the building. Because kids walk by there, so my, next to a donut shop. And, so my wording is, only advertising on the interior of the building interior. only. Yes, sir. So if you went to like Mr. Niles' establishment and just have Coors and Michelob on the inside, and that wouldn't bother you. Not as much as it would if it was facing the outside, yeah. How do y'all feel about that? Can we do that, Mr. Hamby? Um, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I don't know if you're violating someone's freedom. Yeah, it's kind of the freedom of speech, and they litigated this on when they tried to keep the sign coming up on the new 540 corridor when they lost. 
So I, I think it's going to be. I mean, we have the we have our size. You know, for, for, uh, when I like your ID size, you know, size and numbers. I, I don't like like uh, like some of these gas stations up there. They get it. Fifty of those little plastic signs yes. all crooked all over the post. You know. But I think our sign ordinance is supposed to take care of that. Not about the size. <coughs> it's not about the yeah, it's, it's, it's not about the size. It's just the, so let's say nice try and we'll leave it out. <coughs> I, if I may to just for one second, it's just my two cents worth. I, I'm like Mrs. Brown on the without prior approval from the city council. I, I, I fear for you, this council, or any other council that has to make a decision based on who they are, where they are, and what they're selling. That's scary stuff to me. I, I, that's just my two cents. And I, and I understand your comment that they will, they'll have to come to you, but if you have it, whatever footage is, they're not going to come to you. If, if that's all it is. If you don't say, They'll be serious when they come to us. Well, they can be serious, but there, there's no there's no room for any, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you just say 2,000, I'm going to use that 2,000 foot. If you said 2,000 feet, and you don't say without prior approval from city council, they should know before they come here, and you may have to remind them. So would you be happy if we struck the prior approval by the city council? I would. Lord, that I'm not the council, but I would. No, 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 no. no. I'm not talking about the footage. I'm you talking just about to strike without approval and just leave it at 2,000 and that's it. that's it. I'm not suggesting the number at all. I'm just saying I think it's not healthy for you, the council, to be giving approval for anything less than what you took. So, with that in mind, that's the next person that comes up from the planning commission on the variance better not come before me. Well, that's just there will not be a variance given any that's, more that's before we We're going to sell this boat. Yeah, that's my two cents. Well, now that, that's exactly that, what that's all about. We have setbacks for a reason, and when somebody wants to break that setback or give away a bunch of free space, like we used to do tonight, we give them a variance, and Sonny says, well, the planning committee will say we're going this route, and most of the people up here always say, well, let's do what the commissions always say. The commissions are right for some reason. Yeah, I can talk the people keep electing us and for some reason, and we don't get to say anything, because we're just the council. We're not the commissions. So if you're going to put a dead number in the mud, don't come up here with another variance from the planning commission while I'm sitting up here. Because it's got to be in that period. And that's just my two cents worth. Well, there's no, absolutely no difference whatsoever. I agree. I don't want to make some point. I think there ought to be room for variance. Well, sure, there should be room. What? I mean, if, we, I mean, if, I, if I win the lottery, I want to buy the old jail museum with a bar in it. It's all, it's close to everything on this list. But I got money and we'll do whatever. I want to do it. I, I'm asking nicely and whatever. But we're going to have the old jail bar. Right by the courthouse. So we can run right over at the gym. I thought, you, I thought you said the opposite. I thought you said you don't want that. I'm saying we're sitting here talking about not being able to say if the council approves it, we can go ahead and do it. <coughs> so if, if we're going to say 2,000 feet and that's everybody's rule, then there's no more variances coming out of the planning department. Well, it's the council's. Prerogative to cancel to not approve variance. Oh, I agree 100%. Trust me. Yeah, well, yeah, I know that. I'm not it already, never, I'm ever. I'm not <laughs> not I'm not right. I just. It's the same principle. What he's trying well, to same principle, but I think I, in my, this is just my opinion. Again, right. I'm not counsel. Right. You guys are, and I, I understand that. Right. I appreciate Well, that'd be the easiest thing for all of us if, if, the, if the subdivision regulations and these ordinances and everything on our books was black and white. Oh, I agree. And you don't have to come ask us either. Right. Because we get involved in these conversations all the time. They're mm -hmm. difficult and makes people mad and all that. Yeah. I, I don't I agree. Kim's right. You're gonna have people lined up in here and we're gonna get drunk through the mud. We do anyway. That's why we get paid to that big money. <laughs> so with the changes Kim, and what's the uh, do you have a feeling on the two thousand feet, Kim? I, it should be what state law is. I don't know why we would change it. It doesn't make any sense to change it. I'm just from your state law as far as that aspect of the warrants goes, but it doesn't matter to me. Because, I mean, as long as there's a, as long as the council can approve around those, as long as that warning is in there, I mean, you know, obviously you can make it 5,000 feet, then the council could, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, 
And we'll continue the fun on the third reading. So I'd like to make a motion with the state of changes we put this on for the second reading. I on it. I have a motion to second put on for second reading. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Lynn Terry? Are we voting for passing this? Second reading. Yes. Lance Terry? Yes. Unanimous? An ordinance establishing a permitting process and privilege permit for selling or dispensing any controlled beverage within the city of family by businesses. Last to sell alcohol at greater than 11% and a city supplemental tax of 10% of year one, or 10%. The mixed drinks form annual growth of 60% of the round of Repealing any ordinances of conflict, establishing penalties for violation of these provisions, and further. Thank you. Mr. Powell, I have one other. Yeah, I feel like I may have rushed it. Did, did anyone else have commentary that they wanted to say before we moved on in the agenda? Since you asked, I'll try to quickly say something. Um, Cliff Piercy, 2700 Edgewater Drive. Um, you know, it always comes up, and it's been on Facebook and all, uh, the church, Christians, and all that. that. That's the standing defense. The church is not imposing its will on it. Our country was founded on godly principles. Absolutely positive. We try to run from that, but we were. Our church did the church body, all of us, all denominations, are one of the things that makes Greenwood a special place. Uh, you raised your kids here because Greenwood's a great school system. That's part of the reason is because Greenwood's school system, system separates itself from all others. It has dress codes. It has all kinds of codes that other places find offensive. Greenwood stands for something just a little bit extra. That's why you want to be here. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll get away from that. But you also see another thing here tonight that becomes a problem. This is away from the ordinance y'all are working on. But when you start you start off with a two beer restaurant, it turns into a margarita, it turns into a mixed drink, it turns into full blown wet, just like you have it anywhere else. And that is something that we need to protect against. Two beers becomes full blown alcoholic cells in our town. We have stood against that for a long time. I would also just like to suggest to y'all that, and I, you may have that, for your own time's sake, is there a restriction for reapplication after denial? Or can they just come to you every meeting and say, I'm reapplying, I'm reapplying, I'm reapplying? He's, he's asked, he is asking permission to apply, so as far as I know. But that's just what I'm hearing y'all right. having to go through. Right. So so they you turn it down again, as it was turned down in the last meeting, well, you turn it down again, he's right back. Or somebody else, you know, but at least not a reapplication of the previous denial. I think it's so six months in here. But yeah, I'll okay, well, I, I didn't know that. I'm very thinking would be reasonable for y'all. So yeah. I think it'll, there should probably be something in the state law, the one that comes to Squirrels and Little Rock put this on the cities. So there should be something in their law that says about the reapply. I wanted that myself. I didn't know. I meant to check on that. Isn't it ABC? You have to wait a period of time. Well, yeah, ABC does, but as far as just at the local level, I don't know what the donkeys in Little Rock say, but I'm sure there's something in their law. Anyone else? Mr. Bur Burgess, I apologize, I apologize if I seem to be a little curt. I'm only an idea. This is your democracy, and this is the way things work, and uh, I, I think uh, I, we appreciate you. I, I've always believed in open commentary and the citizens are right to come up and lay it to the city council. So I, I've never been one to try to curtail that. And I do appreciate it. I just apologize if I seem a little curt. Well, that's why I said you all will. Huh? This wasn't the issue. I just wanted to ask what you. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little piece of paper that I kept I keep up here for a long time. Mr. Powell might get a little chuckle out of it. I don't know if you want to run, but it says egregious. This this whole this whole topic, if you will, for for this council, I think I can I know for this mayor, is very uh, difficult. One, I, I mean, I've lived here all my life, as many of you have, and so this is just different. This is a different ball game for us to to, to talk about and try to get input from. <coughs> citizens so emotions 
certainly will be at the top of, of everybody from, from off the wall. This is so, excuse me. Yes, sir. If I may, I mean, <coughs> you may or may not know this, but the shoots don't happen like this. This is a recent call that just went into effect where the guys on the rock didn't want to hear people come up here and preach, or the guys on the rock say their water is better than the next one. This used to be good out there. You take your application, you try to gather letters from the mayor, or the council, or the chief of police, or the local bankers, and all that, and you'd have all your little ammo ready to go down there to talk to the ABC guys. And you'd lay it all out there, you present your case, and then the anti people would get up and complain, and then the five guys would vote. And that was it. It was a one day process for the most part. And, and so, for some reason, I have no idea why, I guess they were bombarded daily with a bunch of yahoos. So they decided to put it on the local governments or we have to go through this process and allow people to, to even enter the hallowed halls of the state capitol from here. Now we could have passed, we did pass this the first night. When Mr. Miles applied the first night, we passed it. We could have put that on as a emergency clause and been right through and he had to go deal with, with the jerks in Little Rock. But we didn't do that because this was such a touchy subject in the town, we decided to go with the three readings. And that's fine, I have a problem with that. But just, I'm just saying I'd like to let you know that, unfortunately, this has been thrown in the city's lap and all these people here. I haven't lost any friends. Everybody knows how I stand with this deal. I mean, I've shaken everybody's hand that is against this deal. I don't, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. But think about next time we go to the ballot and people running for your state rep. They put all this on. We, we're having fun in Greenwood. It's a good time. I love it. I've been here my whole life. But we don't, we, this is a headache we didn't need. We shouldn't have to have. But a bunch of Yahoo squirrels in Little Rock think that this, this, and it's going on in every town in the state, period. And I, I, I'm trying to be clean on my name for the guys down there. So. But I just want to let everybody know I didn't know that, that that's how this went down. I guess August 1st it went into effect. I don't know exactly the date, but it's very recent. Which is why we're going through the process of this ordinance because we had no rules. We had no right. process to deal with this debate. So now we're trying to develop a baseline process that says, here's the starting point before you come talk to us. Right or wrong? If we can pass it to the planning commission, <laughs> that's something. Yeah. And that's all I have. Mean. I just want to, some, we have a new face. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> if Lee is not I'm not a gay man. I'm not a gay man. Yeah. I'm not a gay man. 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 I'm John Reno. I live over at Jack and Jack and Lake. I'm new to this area, and probably all listen to me and just like, oh, that's a Yankee. Which I am. Moved from Western New York and my family down here. Um, and bring the business to uh, manufacturing jobs, hopefully in the next year, employing people. And I, I myself uh, didn't know I moved into a dry town. Now, I enjoy a beer once in a while. I teach my children, and they're too young to even know, but they do understand that alcohol exists, and I'm from Western New York. So um, I, I listen to everybody's opinion. Um, I'm, I'm a Christian myself, and you know, it's, it's, it's odd. It's out of my element uh, to hear this conversation about alcohol because it was readily available. Yes, some days you couldn't buy it. Then it was noon, afternoon on Sundays, then you can buy it. So this is all new to me. Now, I see there's many other problems in Greenwood than alcohol. Uh, there's roads, you know, traffic situations, things that my mind is blown. Why we have this? You know, see people say, "Oh, well, at least it's not L.A." You know, that's traffic. You know, we have a good agreement, but there's ways around for situations that we have. And you know, this alcohol situation, I just, I just don't, I don't understand it. And you know, I think because myself, you know, I drive to uh, uh, Fort Smith. Learning my therapy stuff. Mm -hmm. I drive to Fort Smith to, to grab a beer and bring it home. Now, I don't stop at a bar and drink, but I enjoy a beer once in a while. And I see the dollars and the people going to Fort Smith. And, you know, 
people say, well, it's just this one establishment with Mr. Mr. Niles. It's not really the one. It's the bigger picture we have to think about. Because it's not just one revenue stream. It could be many revenue streams that could contribute to the bottom line. So we got to stop thinking about the one situation and think about the grand picture. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, to speak to you, I, one thing I may have glossed over is in this ordinance it says the taxation, and I've said it, the state max, the beer is 10%, and mixed drinks is 14%. We've got nothing in place. If we would approve Mr. Niles and he went on and we never decided we just weren't going to put any process in place or taxation in place, we would receive nothing. So uh, this ordinance establishes the taxation of businesses like this. But I, I, would, I wouldn't expect any big road improvements off of it. But we are working on the traffic issue. Just <laughs> I'll be there. Good deal. Good deal. But a 2,000 foot radius for every business or every restaurant, that, that, that would count out everybody on Highway 10. That would, you know, the Mexican food places, pizza places, all of them, that would be done. I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's, about. It's, 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 arbit it's, it's an arbitrary, the 2,000 feet is arbitrary. You can come before and apply, even though you're last. You know, it, it depends on who's there. You're, you're trying to protect who's there. Now, where you live, you may not want a salvage yard across from your house. Yes, well, you're right. Now, or a trailer park. I, I like salvage yards. I like to go around and see what all red cars are in there. But I don't want one. I'm, my job is to protect you. You don't want one across from your house. There's a time and a place for everything. And, you know, when First Baptist Church swings their doors open, or, you know, West Side Baptist Church swings their doors, or the Methodist Church swings their doors open, they don't want to be looking at one of these places. And I need to protect that. But, you know, we may get a large Catholic church, and they may say, I don't, it doesn't bother us. Let's put it in the face. And then let's, <laughs> there you go. So that's why I've left it arbitrary in what I presented, and that's what's passed the, the, fir the first and second reading, where we can say, yeah, that's fine. Nobody seems to object, and that's fine. That's hypocritical, though, because there's something different between me walking out of the First Baptist or the first whatever and walking and seeing Arby's. It's a restaurant. And I walk out of somewhere, I see my, I see a restaurant. It's not a bar, and it will be a bar. So that's, that, to me, that, that's, that's crazy. I mean, because it's, 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 they're not walking out and seeing a bar. They're walking out and seeing a restaurant. So I mean, that's insanity at its best. And in an arbitrary number, if I offended you or Mr. Terry, you know, and you don't like me, therefore you don't have to approve me because it's not it's, that variance is off. So but if somebody that politically was your friend and you could pass it if it was 200 feet. Not fair, but I think we should follow state law. State law is zero. That makes the council wide open to approve it or not approve it, regardless of, of where the purpose lies. Can it, and, and I'm gonna walk out with some black talk for I'm gonna walk out. Uh, and then I'm not talking about myself, but what's going to happen here if you pass something like this is somebody's going to write a checkbook and litigate with you, and you're going to lose. Okay? There is there is nothing that you're putting into that thing that's going to win in the courthouse. Okay? You will lose, and you're going to cost the city money. No. That's just factual. Uh, that, that's all there is to You will lose. Okay. You see, you can't that. Why would you want to spend fifty, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollars of the city's money? In court, that's what will. I'm not saying I'm doing it. Okay, I'm just saying that's what would happen. Why would you want to do that? Why, over 2,000 feet over looking at a restaurant. A restaurant's what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything different. I don't have a beer on the window. I don't have beer in my sign. It doesn't say sports grill and bar. It says sports grill. Why would you want to cost the city money? Why? You can be sued for anything. I mean, you win. Well, you're a, another, well, another I've had a few conversations with you. You're an intelligent man. You are smart enough to know that that whole ordinance, you're trying to put a, a good attorney, Rick, that sucker's moving now. Well, the ordinance is from Conway and it's been established for 15 years. It's a 15 year old ordinance. You know what? Conway let them come in, yeah. Conway's let them be there. That's why you can have somebody litigate with them. You're wrapping up this whole city where a restaurant can't, and I know you said some people can't fly, we have the ability. 
to the men of the Lord or whatever, I get it. And Rod, I understand. It. But they didn't stop it there. Okay? They taxed it. They said, hey, this you can come in, blah, blah, blah. They didn't stop it. But you're, by saying 2,000 feet, you're wrapping up the whole city. You're smart enough. I'm smart enough. Most people in here, I guarantee you're smart enough to know there's nowhere in the city of Greenwood, okay, that's not residential that we can buy property on, okay, to put in a restaurant, okay? You were asking, Rod, you yourself are asking, by putting saying 2,000 feet, you were asking somebody, like myself, but I'm not saying that, okay, to write a check. And I promise you personally, I can, okay? And Chili's can, and all of our can. You're asking those guys to write a check, and you're asking the city to match that check. And a guy like me will go two, three, four, five, six years with getting court. It's not worth it, brother. Yeah. It ain't worth it. I have respect for each and every one of you. Rod, I've grown to freaking like you, okay? <laughs> First day I went like that, I'm taking both of that, but I've grown to freaking like you, okay? But let's not cost the city money over something that's so minuscule. If, if the church, and I love the church no matter what anybody thinks, okay? If the church was physically walking out their door and had to lay their eyes on the bar, I get it. Did you know there's no regulation on if I want to put a porn store up in here? None. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Okay, we well, get this poor set there is a little different. Okay. There's no but I'm just saying, there's so much stuff that, that, that can be done here. Okay. Maybe I can just produce it here and not sell it. You said saying there, there's, there's so much stuff. So well, let's, let's, let's not say something so small. It costs the city money. It, it, it's not about it's not about walking out and seeing a, seeing a, a bar. It's not a bar. That'd be like we're not walking out and see McDonald's. So let's not put a restaurant in here on Highway 10. Let's get smart about this. Mr. Yes. Well, yes. Let, me, let me get control real quick because I, I meant to keep it off. I'm going to walk out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just, we just, I need, I started out and trying to keep, make sure everybody comes to the microphone. And I'm encouraging you to speak tonight. That's what this is for. This is a city council meeting. Again, you know, the council has the right to, to say what they want to say and keep folks from speaking at certain times. But we have to keep it. And, and not that it's gotten uncivil, but I, I certainly need, if you want to speak, please come to the microphone, state your name address so we can kind of civil matter to do it with. So is that fair enough? Okay. Anybody else wants to speak? I'm, I'm assuming council would be okay if somebody wants to at this point. I'm not trying to shut anybody down, I promise you. I just want to keep it in a good manner. Okay. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so we'll move on uh, to the next item on the agenda. Okay. Number number three on new businesses police budget resolution to outfit the police force. Yes. 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 Yes.
Uh, number four, police capital expenditure slash grants. What I got? It's the waiver of our grant.
the next one. The next one. If you approve this. Because that's just the void. If you don't waive the competitive bid, the next one's irrelevant. But he wants to amend want. the next one if this is approved. To add a section that explains. All Daniel's saying is there's no, there's no language in there showing where the two trucks went and they it says trade-in. Well, somebody, if somebody sat here two years from now and reads that, they're not going to know anything by reading that. Well, they're going to look in the city of the county record. I think that would be covered in the, be covered in the resolution where we're amending the budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there still is anything about the, the dollar amount of the trade-ins. That's 12000 These competitive in. bidding ordinances usually don't include dollar amounts. Daniel's just saying for the clarification of where the money's going. I'm just trying to help Daniel out with his language over here because mm -hmm. some get confused. Yeah. You want to put it in mean, like purchase good, okay. one new Ford yeah. Explorer SUV for seven thousand, whatever it is. Is that what you want 7, to see? Well, I would get competitive. Uh, our competitive we bidding. We just put it out you there. You can straighten it up in the resolution. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Lock it in. Yeah. Okay. I still got a motion for this moment. Yeah, I so you, did, you said to just accept it. There's a clause on it. I take a motion, I'll make a motion to accept the ordinance waiting to pay the bidding, but I don't. Second. Put it on first reading and hold. Put it on first reading and hold. Okay. Yeah. And we have a motion to second. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Terry? Yes. Yes. I'm going to do the last second third reading. Okay, I don't need to read the title. An ordinance waiving competitive bidding for the purchase of one new 2017 Ford Explorer Police Department declaring an emergency of early purpose. Yeah, I'll wait. Second to third reading. Second. Motion to second to waive second to third reading. Mr. Brown? Yes. Powell? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. I'll yes. make a motion we adopt the ordinance. Motion to second to adopt. Mr. Brown? Yes. Powell? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 That motion will be enacted to the emergency clause. Second. Motion is second to enact the emergency vote. Brown? Yes. Brown? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. 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 Thank you. Number six. Yes. Only one resolution. I move on. Down the funds, uh, two spots, uh, 3500 from vehicle maintenance and 3500 from fuel. Be moved over to capital to pay that seven thousand dollar balance that's remaining from the trading fund. Gotcha. Now, where do you want to slide in the Do we need a section two that explains what we're doing with the trade in and exactly that it's from the marshal building as well? That's what they're wanting. So we need to add, I, I guess, would. a section two. So would you would you is that a better way to work that, Tom? Green on the general fund, fund budget. That is coming up. General is that sliced out of here? No, it, it comes out of his budget, but it's from those two line items that we're addressing: okay. vehicle, uh, fuel, and uh, maintenance. maintenance. Okay. But we can above that throw up in the specifics about where the seven thousand came from. So yeah, and he's got the details of the offer, which. Why you enacted the emergency clause and why you you wait and that it did, and then we'll put that in there so anybody that picks up that resolution will know where the seven thousand dollar came from and where we're going to fund yeah. it. Or where the other after the whereas statement, I would just do what you just said. Do another whereas. Well, <laughs> just somewhere need to list where the other twenty five grand came from and about the Okay. Well, yeah, we got to yourself right. So it's got to stick it whereas in it, it'll be explaining what exactly. The purchase price of the vehicle less the two, the 2009, Chevy two 2009 Chevy trucks, which are traded in at a value of blah, 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 blah. And then we've got a record that those two trucks and those VIN numbers went away and this new truck came in. Sure. It's probably better to make all that section one than make this section two. Section, I think those sections are operative, aren't they, Mike? And whereas an explanation that's for what correct. we're doing. That's so correct. indeed, that's an explanation. Whereas it's not really operative. You still have the good numbers? No, I gave that stuff back to you. 
uh, basically the same thing. We want to rezone the uh, parcel at 411 Dogwood, which is in, just basically south of there, for the same type of duplex, uh, uh, same, builder. same builder, same owner of the property. But uh, will be all brick. Will be all brick too. Same, same one. Okay. Uh, Dogwood is here. The other one is, mm -hmm. is Cedar Street, that's just to the north of that. And uh, like I said, same people own both both properties. No bars or not. No bars. Or not. No bars, or not. No bars. Uh, this one was kind of strange because we went back to when we started this. We looked at it, and for some reason, another years ago, it was zone C two. And so this is going to go from C2 to R2, so it's going to correct a, a weird zoning to begin with and, and uh, going to put a nice duplex uh, over that area. And also, on this one, again, the builder is real uh, willing to work with us on Dogwood. There's a huge magnolia tree right in the corner of this property, so he's going to skew the uh, duplex over so he doesn't have to take out the Magnolia tree, and I love magnolia trees, especially if they're in your yard, and I find <laughs> but, uh, it is a beautiful tree, and he's, he's uh, agreed to do that. Maybe most of me adopt this one on the first reading only. First reading? Sure. No, on the first reading by Tyler. First reading by Tyler. We know what you mean. There you go. Second. Uh, there's a motion. Second. And a second. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Ms. Daniel? Yes. 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 An ordinance amending ordinance number 17 for the purpose of rezoning certain property in the city of Greenwood, amending the official zoning map of the city of Greenwood, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Make motion away, second, third reading. Thank you. Motion second. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. 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 Make motion to adopt the ordinance. Okay. Motion second to adopt. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. And Terry, yes. And Terry, yes. Terry. Motion to enact the emergency clause. Thank you. Motion to second to enact the emergency clause. Mr. Brown. Yes. Powell. Yes. Mr. McDaniel. Yes. And Terry. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Number nine, fire department. Actually, on this, really, is it true? Uh, I don't think so. January 
before I it needs to say on that very first meeting, honestly, that's the first change I can see. Oh. We've already established that in the calendar last year. So it's not the second as the eighth. Okay. Yeah. I'll be calling it on the second half. Maybe once we adopt the. Uh, okay. Now, wait a second. Let's see what the Cowboys play on that. Okay. Um, December 4th will be a Monday again. Is it the Tuesday? It'll be a Tuesday. Hey, man, I beat some numbers out. December 4th is a Tuesday. Oh, you're saying it'll be the 4th or the 3rd? Yeah, it'll be on Tuesday, on the day after the break. Unless somebody called it off the weather. Right. If it's not, then Very she knows it's not going to be. She's ignoring me. Okay.
tapering everything to roof drains and then the downspouts. All that will be covered. Right. Are we expecting it to come in with our budgeted amount? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, our studio. We actually, uh, it's, a, it's, a rubber, it's a rubberized roof material. I don't know if it's technical. Not dry on that. Yeah. Toilet paper over And totally flyable overlay. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we also uh, we're good. We're fitting two different kinds. We're building a 60 millimeter system, or we see mill system, and a 80 mill system. So you have your choice of the the industry standard, and then one upgrade if you want to take that upgrade. But uh, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of difference in the cost, but at least you'll have that availability. To, How many people usually bid on something like this? Uh, so far, we've had three bidders pick up the plans. So there could be more before the date. We're having a uh, walkthrough on Thursday. So anybody that shows up will have an opportunity to pick up plans after that. So they may want to come look at it first and decide if they want to do it. Thermal plastic polyolefin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bid date? 14th. 14th. Thursday night. Does this add any bar value to our building? This coming Thursday? Yes. Okay. Thursday. Your best interest 
and the city's best interest to take the second bidder in this case. I mean, the, the first uh, bidder had some um, litigation issues with the city of Fort Smith. Um, they submitted a bid for electrical and uh, for an unlicensed electrical on the bid tab. Um, they submitted a couple other uh, errors on their bid tab. Um, and then there's also just a past performance on a few other jobs that we work with and several others that work for. And I just don't feel it's in your best interest to proceed with them on this particular request. This is that way for your And this is for your grant. This is for your recreational trails. Right. You also have to be a SAM. Um, I think the initials are SAM. I don't know exactly what it stands for, but you've got to have a pre approval from the federal government to bid the project. Yeah, SAM registration. Right. SAM registration, yeah. Well, they're not, they're that, not coming out with this. That, that, that's a problem that we commonly have. We need to start qualifying builders, bidders before they bid. You know, City of Fort Smith does it. You can't do that on a state project. They actually don't even have to be a licensed contractor to bid to this work. Really? Yeah, it's a totally different set of rules that we're okay. dealing with because it's a federal grant. So there's nothing we could do to qualify. No, I, mean, I, could, I could have walked in and said, here's my bid for X amount of dollars, and if it's a low bid, you'd have to accept it, and then I have the required amount of time to go to the state and try to require a, a contractor's license. Um, so it's really a waste. The way it's said, it's really a waste of everyone's time. I mean, it's not done in the traditional uh, path that we use here in Arkansas um, for the right general Arkansas law. So. So you're saying because there's a state? Because it's a federal grant, we have to follow the federal guidelines for bid submission. So the city council didn't need to see that you have any knowledge of these bids being let out or anything? No, it was through the Parks Commission. Right. Work out again. Yeah. We sure appreciate that. So. <laughs> Whenever some litigation came back and we didn't take the lowest bidder, who was going to be getting the heat? Well, yeah, we've not accepted any of the bids yet, so nothing's happened. Or currently, the bids are still under advisement. Right. The real estate. So, as far as someone coming back, I mean, at this point, nothing is happening. Where would they come back and do stuff to them if they had an issue with the city agreement? With it? If, if, if we accepted the, the, city second, council. the second bidder, they would eventually come back to the city yeah. council. <laughs> So again, we can be put in a position to have no knowledge whatsoever of any bid or any dollar value ever even taking place or any bid opening or any job or even any project being Well, I think, no, I did well. I have no knowledge. I'm not disagree. No one on this panel knows anything about the bid opening you just told me. The reports have been given multiple times when we talk about the project that's been going on for about two and a half years. Right. Uh, it's way too long. stage, and that's dealing with the... Yeah. Uh, red tape that we have to go through to get it. So, I mean, I think awareness of the project um, is not, I mean, we've, we've been working out there for a long time on that particular project. Well, I just, I'm just, I'm just, the Lake Parking Lot as part of that right. grant. I mean, so you've heard Richard and uh, Cinda come up here and report about the status of the work. And um, so, there hadn't been really anything going that much out there. No, it's been kind of bogged down. Yeah, I mean, well, we got to a reason where we had to bid the second portion because it wasn't work performed by the city. Uh, that's what we're so waiting on. Ultimately, any bid openings to the Park Commission, Planning Commission, Water Commission, we don't have any say or no matter what we think about it. The council has a body. We elect the people. The meaningless elected people. You've already approved it. I think you approve their budget and their capital expenditures on those particular projects, and they don't ever have to perform all those services. For you, so you don't have to set through that. I guess. Well, we we the, the city commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not even uh, accept the lowest bidder you know, yeah. strategy at the back. Uh, you know. Well, my old complaint is, and we've seen this before, through unfortunately through the planning, was that when you guys start suing people, guess who gets sued? The four six fathers up here. And then, then we get the fire bridge going. Why there's $10 million in the city of Because I don't have any money for it. We'll bleed out. Like we always do. Settle for me and a half. Technically, if you read the law, the mayor is the one that puts all bids. I really do. Just really start doing it. Really start making the deal. Did he approve any bids? Well, he said it. Once they're open and approved by the commissions or whoever. Yeah. Whoever. I love that.
talk more about? Please find money together. Yeah. And uh, on another one in the yeah. last session, we had the parks in general. Does that sound good? Yeah. The parks have okay. a lot to it. Say that the wind was up. Please fire. And uh, plan the next meeting. We'll set that date. Okay. I'm going to put in And that would just be three sessions.
you know, if I was you, I might stick around a while and just let's do something else tomorrow. So she stayed the night and did a heart cath. She had 90% blockage in her main artery as the lead, quote unquote, with a maker. So uh, very fortunate that they found it and put a stent in. And uh, she's good. She's home. Came home today. So I felt very bad for her as brothers do. So I, I got her a really nice card. It was just a generic welcome to Greenwood card and marked out a few words and made it for her to get well. And then taped three coffee stir sticks in there as three extra stents in case they need them. <laughs> and took it to her. So I mean, we had everybody sign. But she's thanks for asking. She's doing doing much better. And thank you for that. And hopefully, and of course, she's now on heart medication and stuff. So. But the good news is, well, she has a heart that we found. Yeah. <laughs> Continue to joke, and I'm glad I like the mayor. She's in good shape. So, sir. I like the mayor. Kind of like, yes, I like the mayor. That's correct. But thank you for asking. Uh, Council Forum. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, I wear a million hats, and one of my hats is the president of the Basketball Booster Club. And so I'm here again to ask the city if y'all would like to work on a session stand again. Well, I had a good time. Yeah. That was, a, that was fun. Now, it won't be on Valentine's Day if you get in earlier this time. That would be good because that didn't go well at my house. Anyway, I had a meeting this morning at 6 o'clock before I got here with that, and so I thought well, I would ask. Uh, well, there's five dates that are open right now. Okay. January 2nd is a Tuesday. January 5th is a Friday. January 19th is a Friday. February the 2nd is a Friday. And February 15th is actually a Thursday. Which I'm assuming will be a club trip or something. Well, it's all over the usually so Anyway. Can we look at those days and get back with it? He pleased if you grab it on me. I thought I'd leave it up with I think Simon, you helped it in. Yeah, and my spouse is Simon. Okay. We'll, we'll do it. That's fine. We ate as many nachos as we saw. Right. There you go. It was. It was fun. We'll do it. Well, if you find something about ASAP, because I have another lady that's asking banks. Should be going tomorrow and ask the banks. We normally ask all four banks. Is it four? Yes. Four people, yeah. Put, put my, me and my spouse down for the 19th, January 19th. She's speaking for the city. 19th of January? I think it's on Sunday. I'll, just, I'll put the city down for the 19th and then you know, break where you want. Leave four or five people. I'll bring my spouse Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the margarita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to go to Fort Smith to get it. <laughs> Thank you. We might even come up with another one tomorrow, you know, but we'll take that one for sure. Hey, anything else from council? I'm yes, assuming that, uh, that time, yeah. we can probably, let me get back to the wall there. Uh, I talked to Tay and she said they're coming next meeting. Yes, on. yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. man, so we can, I can worry to bring it up and Talk to yep. Do they put it on the agenda or? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have your contact from the mayor. I discussed some of the meetings with the mayor and the mayor. Yeah. 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 I had a good visit with Tom and Doug about part of it, so we're going to try to get down. So he's available to answer, answer all questions that you have. Yep. And Tom is going to send him information. He asked, I talked to him a little bit, some specifics about what could or couldn't happen. We're going to now let him talk about it. I was going to send him information regarding sales tax revenue because obviously bonds are based on that. Right. He'll pay back, so he's going to send information of what we do now, and so he can have some idea. He's also going to bring a gentleman, I believe, if I understood him right, from the USDA, in case we're interested in that grant money, cool. forty years, I think, type of situation. So cool. We'll get some good hard facts from him. And if they charge to come, I will visit with Michael. I don't even think they're going to charge. If they do, we'll just take that part. It's fine. You can make sure to charge. You never had it before. With all the business. I'll pay you the time of money. Mike's treating him well. Okay. Uh, anything else from council? Right here, right here. Yes, sir. Uh, this year, the Arkansas Municipal League is having their winter conference in Fort Smith. And uh, we've got a whole floor around it. Well, I was just hoping I think after your floor and party that we could maybe uh, try to fill up the table at the uh, opening bank. That'd be great to be in right here. And even that should be after your birthday bash. I mean, before your birthday bash. What's that date? Well, it's uh, uh, 11th and 12th. Okay. 
your birthday bash? No, no, that's one of the yeah, but it, the opening banquet's on Wednesday night, isn't it? Oh, it is. Well, what is that? Tenth night. Tenth eleventh. You wouldn't want me there Thursday. <laughs> well, we just I think it's been suggested since it's a full trip. This is the first time yeah. since I've been involved. If, it, if it's Wednesday, I'll talk to you. Because I'll be gone Thursday. Okay, okay, so this is for Tuesday. Where are we with Bobby? So this is the first time in 30 years, which made a fourth spin. It would be nice if we could represent ourselves on Wednesday night, just to the table. Uh, I don't want to push y'all to go to classes or anything, but at least if we could just show up to the opening banquet. I guess we'll sign us up. I you can, I don't think you can just show up for that. You've got to be signed up for the conference. You've got to be signed up for the they do, it's on the tent. They actually the do that. Wednesday the tent. They actually do have to put the security these days. Okay, yeah. so it's Wednesday the tent, so we're definitely going to need a head count because we're going to have to register for the all. Well, we're already okay to register. Yeah, if you'll just call me, I'll register you if you want to, if you want to go. So you have myself and AC registered because we always go, right? I don't have any registered because I haven't heard from you, but I will now. This is why we always get the dumpy room that we're in North Little Rock. Because you don't ever. <laughs> Tell me, your lodging will be in the house this time. Your house will be in the house. Now, y'all are staying in the penthouse suite. Exactly. Exactly. Over they're renting the room right now. But y'all never tell me early the day before you want to go. I was going to say, that's not really the reason you get to come here. Me and AC are, so AC and I are going, but we, of course we don't need any rooms. Right. That's the beauty. You need more than you know. The expenses are bad. I don't need a room either. You don't need a room? <laughs> if it's here, if it's I don't know. I hate, to, I, hate to, I hate to spend money on the whole weekend when I can't go to classes. I can't get out of work. That way you, get a, you get a new state statute book and everything. I don't think I can't miss work. I can do it Wednesday, but I can't. I mean, I can go on a night. What's the but I can be there with all I'm asking for is Wednesday. You have to be signed up. I'll be signed up. Please tell me I'm going to like Flint. Okay, now, what's the other thing I'm going to talk about? What's the cost, though? Uh, I don't want to spend the hundred and seventy five hours a season yeah, like that. one Wednesday night bank I can't go on the third day Friday. So. No, no. You do get all right. I'll let you I'll let you know. I don't have to do it. We do do get the new legal book. Yeah, that one. Brown you can get it if he does. Okay. Yeah. Smith or, and I, 
and helping with that. And it's really neat that Fort Smith is attracting that. Yeah, tomorrow, Thursday, a little bit probably. So I'll be going. I'll be here in the morning. Yeah, if you want to do something. Safewise Brad presents this award to the City of Barima for their efforts in community safety and crime prevention. Second safest city in the state. Uh, Greenbrier, I don't know what's wrong with us. We can't catch up with Greenbrier, but that's obviously a great thing. We appreciate what you guys do for us. Fundraiser, I'm asked to mention this for the fish, it's a fish fry bingo night. I don't know if you got this in your pocket. Uh, the fund for the whole family, all proceeds go to the Greenwood Senior Center. Saturday, January 13th, dinner at 4.30, because that's when that's senior eat. It's at 4.30. Uh, it's bingo after dinner, which I'm not sure is legal. Uh, tickets are $10 a person. Uh, each ticket will buy you a uh, Each ticket gets you a fish dinner with all the fixings, dessert, drink, and two bingo cards. Kids' plates are $5, so that's a good cause over at the senior center. If you've never been to Greenbrier, it's a town a little bit smaller than ours. There's two weeks ago. And they have an unbelievably bad traffic problem, which is kind of north and yeah, a little right. bit east yeah. of Conway. Yeah. And they're, well, they're humongously four lane right through the middle of town with a turn lane. And it's bumper to bumper. We're just saying a four lane that does not, does not fix it. And on that note, I have not gotten anything back officially from the highway department since we were told by Mr. Uh, director, help me. Uh, Scott Bennett, that we were under, we were being uh, studied again. We noticed a few weeks ago some very odd-looking camera-looking things attached to several poles around town with some counters. I don't know if that was the highway department. Did you ever find out? I don't know if it was. And then I've heard that there was another one out here on the highway. So we're hoping that, that there actually is a new. And I'm. I'm not saying Mr. Bennett let us astray. I'm not firmly to believe that we are being studied again. So I'm going to try to contact them uh, next day or two, Mr. Adams, maybe through chat and see what he knows. And get, I'd like to get a confirmation, absolutely, that they're looking. I know what you're doing. You're staring at me. I feel you're being guy. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the name? Sam at the APO? Yes. He, he says that he has seen the study. Okay, good. So it's really happening. All Sam's. All Sam's. Okay. And so, anyway, we're, we know we're being studied, so that's good. We're being watched. Uh, anything else? Thank you again for a great meeting. I think that we did a lot of stuff in the time that we've been here. I know it's been a long night. Uh, somebody wake up Tanya and tell her that she can go home in her own bed. Make the motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion second.